Hello there. In this video, I'd like to present the key ideas of Luang, Pham, and Manning's paper, Effective Approaches to Attention-Based Neural Machine Translation. This paper is one of the most important papers in the field of neural machine translation and in deep learning in general. The central idea of this paper is the implementation of a new kind of attention, local attention, which is computationally more efficient and also has better performance than the previous ways of applying the attention. Here are the main points of this article, which I will go over one by one. Chapter 1 Neural Machine Translation and Attention-Based Models a neural machine translation system is a neural network that directly models the conditional probability of translating a source sentence to a target sentence. Traditionally, this task used to be done by two components, an encoder and a decoder. The encoder computes a representation for each source sentence. The decoder generates one target word at a time. This approach had such a lot of potential but it had a number of shortcomings, one of which was that it couldn't manage long sentences well. So, in 2015, Badenau and co-authors proposed a new attention-based model for machine translation to fix this. Attention model attempts to overcome these problems by allowing the decoder to access the complete encoded input sentence. Since certain portions of the input are more important than others in order to produce the next word in translation, the core idea is to induce the attention weights alpha over input sentence to assign priority to the position set where the appropriate information is present to produce the next output token. The attention weights are calculated in an attention block. The goal is then to drive a context vector CT that captures relevant source side information to help predict the current target word YT. An interesting fact about this particular architecture of attention model is that it can take any input representation and reduce it to a single fixed length context vector to be used in the decoding step. As a result, it is possible to decouple the input representation from the output representation. This advantage could be used to implement hybrid encoder decoders, the most common of which are convolutional neural networks or CNNs as an encoder and RNN or LSTM as a decoder. Image and video captioning, visual question answering, and voice recognition are all examples of multimodal activities where this architecture comes in handy. Attention-based models are split into two sections in this paper, global and local. These classes differ in terms of whether the attention is given to all source positions versus only a few. Chapter 2 global attention. Let's say that we have x1, x2, and x3 as our inputs and have calculated the first output token. Now, how can we calculate the second target hidden state using the global attention approach? We should take the current hidden states and every source hidden state and fit it into a score function. What does this function do? The idea behind score function is to measure the similarity between two vectors. Here, the idea is to let the model learn the alignment weights together with the translation. So, in other words, using the score function allows our model to selectively concentrate on helpful parts of the input sequence and thereby learn the alignments between them. What is the best way to measure the score? The paper outlines four options for doing so. Dot general, concat, and a location-based function in which the alignment scores are computed from solely the target hidden state HT. Let's take a look at these different approaches of calculating the score. As I said, the purpose of a score function is to determine how similar two vectors are. Calculating the dot product of two vectors is one of the most effective ways to capture their similarity. The general approach of calculating the score function uses trainable weights WA, which makes it a more flexible approach to measuring the score function than the dot product process. 
The CONCAT or addictive approach CONCATs the source hidden state and target hidden state vectors and uses a small neural net to calculate the score. The location based function simply skips the score estimation and outputs the alignment vector directly, which we will discuss shortly. So far, we have calculated the scores. Now what? Well, next step is to calculate the alignment vector. As the formula in this slide shows, we should simply use softmax function to convert our score values into probabilities. Given the alignment vector as weights, the context vector CT is computed as the weighted average over all the source hidden states. Given the target hidden state HT and the source side context vector CT, we employ a simple concatenation layer to combine the information from both vectors to provide an attentional hidden state. The attentional vector is then fed through the softmax layer to predict the next output token. Chapter 3. Local Attention The attention weights in the global attention model are distributed softly across all portions of the source. The core idea behind the local focus model, on the other hand, is to find an attention point within the input sequence, select a window around it, and then pay attention to that portion of the input. But how to implement this idea? At time t, the model produces an aligned location PT for each target expression. The context vector CT is then derived as a weighted average over the set of source hidden states within the window PT minus D and PT plus D, in which D is empirically selected. PT can be chosen in two ways, monotonic and predictive. In monotonic alignments, we simply set PT equal T, assuming that source and target sequences are roughly monotonically aligned. The alignment vector AT is defined according to this formula, which is just like what we saw in global attention, but is shorter and has a fixed length. In predictive alignment, rather than just assuming monotonic alignments, the model predicts an aligned position as shown in the slide. WP and VP are the model parameters, which will be learned to predict positions. S is the source sentence length. As a result of sigmoid, PT is always between 0 and S. The alignment weights have been redefined in a new way. We use a Gaussian distribution centered around PT to favor al alignment points near PT. It's important to remember that PT is a real number, while S is an integer inside the window centered at PT. By utilizing PT to derive AT, we can compute backprop gradients for WP and VP. This model is differentiable almost everywhere. Let's compare the visualized alignment weights produced by these models. The global model's attention weights are shown here. It is clear that this model pays attention to all of the input sentence, and therefore, we can see bright squares here and there. This alignment visualization comes from the local monotonic alignment method. In comparison to the previous slide, it is more clustered around the figure's diagonal. Lastly, this figure shows the attention calculated with local predictive alignment method. As you can notice, this approach yields a result similar to the previous slide's figure, but smoother. Chapter 4. Results At the time of publication in 2015, this paper had achieved the state-of-the-art status in machine translation between English and German benchmark. Let's see how they did it. Their base model wasn't good at all. With the blue score of 11.3, it was behind its competitors by a huge gap. By reversing the source sentence, they improved their blue score by 1.3 points. By using dropout, they increased the blue score by another 1.4 points. Adding global attention boosted the blue score by 2.8 points.
indicating the importance of attention. In another attempt to make their model better, the authors used input fitting approach that helped their model by 1.3 blue points. But what is this method exactly doing? It would be suboptimal if we made attentional decisions without considering previous alignment choices while choosing new alignments. In order to resolve this, an input fitting method was suggested in which, as shown here, attentional vectors HT are concatenated with inputs at following time steps. Back to the chart, using predictive local attention, increase the blue score by around a point, bringing it to number 19, limiting their vocabularies to be the top 50,000 most frequent words for English and German languages. They converted words not in these shortlisted vocabularies into a universal token. This easy move assisted their model in achieving another 1.9 blue score, closing the gap with the state-of-the-art model. Finally, they reached the state-of-the-art status by ensembling 8 models and achieved 23 blue scores. Chapter 5. Analysis This diagram shows learning curves of this model. Test costs are in perplexity. Perplexity metric in NLP is a way to capture the degree of uncertainty a model has in predicting or assigning probabilities to some text. It is pleasant to observe a clear separation between non-attentional and attentional models. Another fascinating bit of proof for the effectiveness of attention models can be found here. This graph shows that attentional models outperform non-attentional models when faced with long sentences. The quality does not degrade as sentences elongate. Let's examine different attention models and different alignment functions. The location-based function does not learn good alignments. It is interesting to observe that DOT works well for the global attention and general is better for the local attention. Finally, among the different models, the local attention model with predictive alignment is the best. Conclusion In this paper, two basic and efficient attentional mechanisms for neural machine translation were proposed. The global approach which always look at all source positions, and the local one that only attends to a subset of source positions at a time. The effectiveness of proposed models were tested in the WMT translation tasks between English and German in both directions. For the English to German translation direction, the ensemble model established new state-of-the-art results. This paper not only shows that attention-based NMT models are superior to non-attentional ones in many cases, but also sheds light on which score functions are best for which attentional models. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video educational and informative. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.